Welcome. Let's look at a piece of styrofoam floating in water. And as we have it now, it is in equilibrium. Meaning the absolute force of buoyancy is equal to the magnitude of the force of gravity. Our styrofoam has a area A up for this top, and it has a height H. So our styrofoam is going to be some amount of depth underneath the water, which we can call this D. And so if we're in equilibrium, right, our buoyancy of the submerged styrofoam will uh, equal the force of gravity of the entirety of it. So we can write this in our organized step. We can say for equilibrium, that our acceleration of the y is equal to our force of buoyancy minus the force of gravity over the mass. If it's in equilibrium, all of this is equal to zero. So our force of buoyancy is going to be the density of the water times the area times this depth times g minus our force of gravity is the mass of the styrofoam entirely times g and this Forces will be zero because we can, of course, cancel out this mass up here. So what we want to ask is we want to now push it down. An amount. We will call it magnitude of y. So in order to understand this, it might be nice to have our coordinate system. Just so we understand that we have y is up, x is over. This is what we used here, right? We said our force of buoyancy was pointing up, our force of gravity is pointing down. So redrawing this, we'll just do the nice kind of 2D for the most part. So we still have A and H, but now we are going to point it, right, a magnitude of Y down from its equilibrium point because its equilibrium point D is now this much. So now we have a magnitude of Y, but really our new depth is equal to negative Y plus our old depth. Right, if we push it down y, then this leads to a new depth of negative y plus d. So an example of this is right if we push it 0 0.1 meters and the old depth was 0 0.2 meters, well we would have to push it negative 0 0.1 meters since we have negative times negative 0 0.1 meters plus 0 0.2 meters is equal to 0 0.3 meters. So right, we are pushing it down negative 0 0.1 meters. So now if we have in not equilibrium, we have that our acceleration in the y is equal to our new force of buoyancy, rho w, a, g, and instead of d, it's now our new depth, negative y plus d, and we still have our old force of gravity minus the mass of the styrofoam times gravity over our mass of the styrofoam. We're not in equilibrium, so we can't say anything equals zero. So, everything's looking good. I can expand this out, just a sub y equals rho w, a, g, negative y plus rho w a g d minus m s g over m s. Now, why did I write all of this out? I wrote all of this out because every time I see rho w a d g minus m s g, I can replace it with zero. So looking over here, I have rho w a g d minus m s g, so I can replace it with zero. 
So now in my solve step, I can use this information, this information, and now I have my acceleration in the y is equal to moving this minus sign out to the front, negative, then C of the water, area of the styrofoam, g times the magnitude of what I pushed it down over the mass of the styrofoam. And in fact, if I care, I can represent the mass of the styrofoam is equal to the density of the styrofoam times its area times its height. So I can say my acceleration of y is negative density of the water, area g y over density of the styrofoam, area height. And from this, I can cancel this out. And I have my acceleration in the y is a negative, and then I have rho w g over rho w rho s h times y. Why did I do all of this? Well, I have my acceleration, the second derivative of y, being related to y with a minus sign and some constant factor. Let's remember the simple harmonic motion condition is a sub s equals negative omega squared s. So, in fact, when I push the styrofoam down and then release it, I will have a large buoyant force pushing it up, and then it will go above equilibrium, and now the force of gravity will pull it down until it goes back down to its original amplitude, and it will oscillate between this state, this state, and another state where it is a y less than b. We have in fact said that buoyancy creates the simple harmonic motion conditions. And so we have a solution to this. That our y as a function of time, our deviance from this depth d is equal to some sort of y max cosine of omega t plus the angle phi. In this case, we are starting with a negative y. So we would have our solution, y of t is equal to negative some initial y, cosine, and then all of this is my omega, but this is squared, omega squared, so I have the square root of rho of the water g, over rho of the styrofoam h times time. And I already put this negative sign to indicate the phase. So, simple harmonic motion is going to come up in a lot of different cases, right? This was just the week after simple harmonic motion. We've already found a way for buoyancy to provide the simple harmonic motion equation. All that we did was just use our forces and solve for these forces.